Hey, First Things First listeners, before we start the show, I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com, reimagined for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app right now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360 degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, as well as the televised version of this show, just a click away. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. So download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com. Now let's start the show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. Jenna Wolf, Brandon Marshall, Kevin Wilds. We actually have a jam-packed show. A lot going on on this Wednesday morning. We're going to start with a big decision that was made in Pittsburgh yesterday that can affect a lot of things now in the NFL getting ready for this uh, Week 17. So we're going to start in Pittsburgh where the Pittsburgh Steelers made the announcement we thought they might make yesterday. They're going to sit Ben Roethlisberger Sunday against the Browns. They've already won the division. They can finish no worse than third now in the AFC, and Big Ben's big arm could probably use some big rest. So the Steelers will turn to Mason Rudolph in what will be a rematch of that ugly brawl with Miles Garrett last year. But, Brandon, let's focus on Mike Tomlin's decision here to rest Big Ben ahead of the playoffs. You like this move? I love this for a veteran player, for an aging player. Absolutely. Big Ben said this a couple weeks ago, and, 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 and look, before I even jump into what, it, what, what, what he said, we always have to take Big Ben's comments with a grain of salt because Big Ben is a drama king when it comes to injuries, when Correct. it comes to his body. It's like, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, I'm about to go on IR, and then he goes out and play That's the next right. game, and he throws for That's four right. touchdowns. That's his entire career, right, Nick? So let's just be careful there. Yep. But Big Ben a couple weeks ago said, look, Everybody in the NFL right now is dealing with something. Everybody in the NFL has an injury. And that's something that we say uh, around the league. It's like after week one, so you're, you're fighting through something. So when you look at this situation, they have solidified their spot in the playoffs. Not a lot can change. So when you look at it, yes, I like it for Big Ben. You got guys around the league that manage their body, manage their arms a little bit differently. You go down to New Orleans, you go down uh, 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 to the Bayou, and, and you look at Drew Brees. Drew Brees doesn't throw the ball on Wednesday, right? Like, yeah, I was there for a couple of weeks, there for a month, and I saw this guy just sit in the back, just get the mental reps and go through the motions, but he never threw a ball. Teddy Bridgewater was the guy on Wednesday that led the number one offense and threw all the balls to the wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs, and routes on airs and one-on-one. So when you look at this, absolutely, I love it. Uh, Big Ben will go into the playoffs fresh, and he will be able to heal. Uh, whatever's going on in his body. Because there's some things, Nick, we just don't know uh, what these players are dealing with. It's just not on the injury report. It's absolutely right. It's a thousand percent the right decision. I, I think resting guys in week 17, if you have a bye in the playoffs in the first round, which this year only the Chiefs and whoever, Packers, Saints, Seahawks, and the NFC could get it, is a risky decision because rust comes into play. But if you don't have a bye and you're essentially locked into your playoff position, you can give yourself a bye. And that's what Tomlin's doing for his most important player and his oldest player. And it's absolutely the right decision. The Steelers have won the division thanks to the win against Tennessee. So they know no matter what, ha- no matter how the playoff bracket breaks, if they win in round one and Buffalo wins in round one, they're playing Buffalo in round two no matter what. Now, this no. could determine if that game's in Buffalo or Pittsburgh, but given the lack of fans, that probably has less import this year than any other year. And Wilds, this is why the comeback over Tennessee, I'm sorry, over Indy this past week 
was one of the 10 biggest wins big. any team has had in the NFL all season. There have been 240 games yep. played all year. If we were to rank them in importance, near the top of the list would have been an early game, Packers beating the Saints because that's the tiebreaker and the reason right now they're the one seed. Chiefs beating the Bills would be close by because had they lost that game, the Bills would right now be the mm -hmm. one seed. And shortly thereafter on that list is what the Steelers did last week. Because if they lose that game, they now have to play Big Ben in Week 17 because it's to win the division. It's it, the it, yeah. the whether or not they get any home games depends on it. So I think it's a great decision by Tomlin and a very very it, it makes the comeback over the Colts even bigger in hindsight. Yeah. I'll tell you something that was big. No one's got this take, Brandon. Make you feel better since your Steelers went on a little skid there. I think those losses were probably good. If they, we were talking about undefeated oh. seasons for months, and all of a sudden they, they lose play. some games. If they were 15 and 0 right now, we, there, we'd be like, oh my gosh. I think Ben would have to play as much as people said, like, oh, I don't care about that. Absolutely. I think those undefeated <laughs> seasons would be a big thing. So yeah. I think though, losing those games, we should go and retape those shows, Jenna. Retape them and be like, we thought it was a big deal, and we I'm thought it was in. bad. Actually, good for you, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, All right. So look, wait, can so we, look, let's talk yes, about absolutely. what this. I couldn't imagine. Finish yeah, Jenna, point, really quickly, in. I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine being, you know, in that position if I'm Mike Tomlin, even going back to Bill Belichick, do you rest your guys when this game really is meaningless, mean, meaningless and or, or do you play to go for a record, right? When the when the right. ultimate goal is to win a Super Bowl. If I'm a head coach general manager, I will struggle making that decisions. That decision. So it's me. a great point. And maybe and maybe it's meaningless for the Steelers. It is certainly not meaningless for the Cleveland Browns. In simple terms, Correct. a win would very much be nice for this team. A Browns win snaps the NFL's current longest playoff drought. It is 18 years. Boy, Cleveland would love to snap that because it's embarrassing. So for the Browns to make the playoffs, they need to win. Boom. Or a couple other things. They have to have the Colts lose or have Tennessee lose, coupled with Miami and Baltimore wins. But in short, a win and they're in. So, yep. Brandon, let me ask you this. If they don't win and they don't get help after what they put together this year, what, what do you think it means for Baker and the Browns if they miss the playoffs? So, so look, Nick, uh, uh, confession. I might, I might sound like a contradiction here, right? Because... You and I see this differently. For me, I truly believe all 32 teams should have one main goal, and that's to win the Super Bowl. You feel like there's some teams out there that's like, look, man, just getting to the playoffs is a win for us. Turning around our franchise is a win yep. for us. So right. I, I do believe that, right? But at the end of the day, when it does settles, they say they, they lose and they, they don't make the playoffs. When it does settles, if I'm Baker Mayfield and the Browns, I, I do, you know, pop my head up come the end of January. I mean, the end of January, the beginning of, of February. And I'm like, you know what? We are trending in the right direction. We can build off of this, right? Because you got to start thinking about, you know, what happened the year in the, pe the year before and what you can do to build on it and be better. So you have to go through this assessment of the year before. And when you do that and you start thinking about uh, the positive you can take out of it moving forward, I, I, I do think there's a lot that you can be proud of. But at the end of the day, you're still a loser. So, so Nick, I might sound like a walking contradiction <laughs> right now, uh, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I don't see the I don't see I don't well, see the Browns not being in the playoffs. So right. So here's <laughs> the thing. Great. And I'm gonna your take surprised me. My take might surprise you. If they don't make the playoffs, it erases almost all the good they did this year. If you go into oh, the season and say the Browns are going to go, the Browns are going to go ten six <laughs> and miss out on the playoffs due to a tiebreaker. I think if you said that in September, you'd say okay, maybe not the full expectations of the year, but a step in the right direction. That's if you said it in September. But if you said it twelve days ago, when the Browns were yep. ten and four, and you had the Jets in front of you, the Jets. And then you've got the Steelers without Big Ben in a game that's somewhat meaningless mm. for them and say that's how you get to 10 and 6. That would be a disaster. 
and a disaster as far as you actually want Baker and Stefanski yeah. to get playoff experience, even if it's only just one game. So like real tangible things and a disaster as far as like more narrative, like same old Browns. Like, oh, the, the Clippers of the NFL. Like, even when the, you think everything's going good, yeah. it's going to come crashing down. And so, I, Wilds, I'm going to use, I'm going to steal an analogy from you. You would do a better one. That's why I'm doing it first. Okay, uh, here you go. I feel a little Game <laughs> of Thronesy. Like, maybe slightly overrated, but everyone understood was great. But yet, if anyone brings it up at this point, what are they going to say? Man, that last season was Where a were mess. They all going? It tarnished the whole thing. <laughs> And if you're the Browns, it's like, okay, the season, pretty damn good. And then if all of a sudden, the final two weeks, you lose to the Jets and old conked on the head Mason Rudolph, that's what people are going to remember. And so I think it would turn the season into a disaster, Wilds. I think it would turn the season into a disaster. <laughs> That wasn't really a metaphor. That. that was just your opinion on Game of Thrones, which I don't know on if Game you've watched Thrones, or, or right. not. But that's I, I would I'm going to give that a, a a B. The Jets versus Mason Rudolph thing. If they lose, that's bad. I want to talk a little bit about Miles Garrett versus Mason Rudolph because when this came out, everyone's like, "Oh, let's go round two. Get your boxing gloves. Get all that stuff." And I think everybody, if they if they followed Ooh. Miles Garrett's Ooh. story has this wrong, except the people on cleveland.com who wrote some wonderful stuff. So here's the thing, what's really happening, although it is like, it, it, it's, it's, it's a video that's interesting to watch, I admit that, but here's the real story. Miles Garrett said he was considering retiring from football, Brandon. This was like, a not, this was rough oh, wow. for him. Said, and then he said, look, wow. I wanna clear the air. This was in September. He said, you know, if, I, if it was to happen, I'd be fine with it. Not just fine, I wouldn't mind, I'd be happy. He goes on. But look, he decided to become, he said he wanted to be a better football player and a better man. We know he's crushing on the football field. He's got 12 sacks, just a general menace. He was leading the league before he went down to COVID. And he's the Browns' Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. He's done like clean water stuff yeah. in Tanzania with Chris Long's group. He's, the, he's on the Browns' Social uh, Justice Committee. So I think everyone yep. wants to make this like uh, a sensational story, but it feels like for the good of football, for the good of the Browns, for the good of Steelers, they should meet up in midfield before the game, shake hands, and move towards 2021 with like a clean slate. Counterpoint, yeah. okay. you should conk him again yeah. if they Go lose. Ahead. Conk there you go. Nick was like <laughs> chomping at the bit to get that out. All right, Browns obviously oh, so need the win. Beautiful Wilds. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, one that's really team my role. they're not Sorry. working about You're making to the playoffs. The Packers. Packers are cruising at just the right time in large part because of their QB wide receiver duo. But is it the best duo in the NFL? We're going to discuss. That's next. <laughs> it was very well said, Wilds. Sorry, Wilds. What's up, first thing first, listeners? It's your boy Shay Sharp co-host of FS1's Undisputed. I wanted to tell you about my new podcast, Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before to something. Each week, I sit down with a guest for a drink and conversation, and as host and proprietor of Club Shay Shay, I've welcomed in esteemed guests such as Snoop Dogg, Floyd Money Mayweather, LeVar Ball, Isaiah Thomas, just to mention a few. Whether I'm talking to an athlete, a musician, an actor, or a lifelong friend, Club Shay Shay is a place where people share inspiring and motivational stories about their journeys to prominence. The new episode drops every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to Club Shay Shay now and make sure you never miss a new episode. Now, back to First Things First. Let's head to Green Bay now in our B segment, as we like to do this here in First Things First. Good things happening up there in cheese country. Packers are healthy, unlike their curd. Aaron Rodgers passed Mahomes in the MVP odds. And Devontae Adams is having an absurd season. And that last one, Devontae Adams, that's a big one for Aaron Rodgers, who knows just how lucky he really is. I think just the way that he's dominated, I haven't seen uh, this this type of domination since Charles. Um, it, it's just been on a different level. We've played, uh, you know, we've played 15 games. He's played 13, but really 12 and a half because uh, he missed the whole second half of Detroit. Uh, so the numbers that he's put up is ridiculous. And you start talking about the history of a franchise. This isn't just any franchise. This is the Green Bay Packers. We've been around since 1919. I think Aaron Rodgers.
Rogers opens up more to Pat McAfee than literally anyone else, including his family. But, Brandon, we're talking about Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams now. Probably one of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in the NFL. But in your opinion, are they the best duo? Yeah. Ah, oh, man, Jenna, this is a toss-up, right? Because... You can go out to Kansas City, and and, and and that's a toss-up between Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, or Tyreek Hill. Uh, you can go to who else is playing lights out? D-Hop and Kyler Murray. Uh, we can also go out to Seattle. You know, so there's a lot of people that's playing well. I'm going to go with those guys out in Buffalo. I'm going with Stephon Diggs, oh. and I'm going with Josh nice. Allen as the best duo. Wow. Because here, here's what I'm looking for. And, and, and I'm probably wrong, right, because Devontae Adams, everything Aaron Rodgers said is true. <laughs> he could potentially be the best wide receiver right now. But when I look at this, I'm looking at who reminds me of myself and Jay Cutler. I truly believe if Jay Cutler and I spent more time together and we played 10 years together, we would probably have gone down as the best duo in the history of the game. After my first touchdown, Whoa. I remember going to Jay Cutler, we met in the end zone, and I said, Jay, I said, Jay, uh, Marvin Harrison, Peyton Manning, they're at like 144 touchdowns. They connected 144 touchdowns. I said, that's number one. We got 144 something to go. All right. That was my goal. That was my vision. <laughs> so I'm looking at the nonverbal communication. I'm looking at guys when it. they look at their quarterback and they say, yee. That's all they say is yee. And, and the quarterback knows exactly what he's about to do. I'm about to do the opposite of what the coach told me to do. Are you with me? So that last play that we just showed, that's a perfect example of those guys being on the same page. This is simple sprint right option. He has one option for real. That is to throw the ball in the flat to get the first down or get the touchdown. That is it. This is a traditional play. Everybody uses it in their third down packages in their red zone package. He actually went sprint, right? He pivoted, and then he came to the left. I said, oh, my goodness, Brian Dayball, he is getting uh, uh, creative. How do you innovate on sprint right option? And then after the game, Josh Allen said, no, that wasn't the play. I just had to go make something up. And then what do you see? You see Steph Stephon Diggs actually run a route that looks like they drew this up on the sideline, or they practice this all week. This duo is scary. And Nick, here's why they're scary. It's their first year. Those other guys been playing together for a couple years. How are they doing this? Leading the league and receiving yards in year one. I got to go with them, but I could easily be wrong, Nick. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to let w Wilds go, okay. buddy, because there's a lot go to unpack I'm going to go. Brandon I just said. <laughs> Wilds, you go. No, I know. Well, well I, I, I'm I, I'm not even ready to let Jenna go for her cheese curds that she keeps throwing under the bus. So there's like the takes keep, keep getting hotter as the show goes on. The I'll try to make was one here. Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> cheese curds thing. Go. Stop stop yes. working on cheese curds. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. There's one answer. There's one answer, and everybody knows it. And nobody wants to say it because everybody likes the new hot thing. We know there's one answer. And he's only got seven touchdowns this year. Second most on the team. He's only got 600 yards. But when you talk about combinations, Nicholas, there's one that when he spikes the ball, you say, ooh, that feels good. That feels oh, like the old no. dynasty. Oh, what? no. That's what the answer no. is, and you know it. It's not emotional. Don't it's, do just, it. um, it's just the statistics. It's oh, just the statistics, God. guys. If you want to say that math is no longer okay. a relevant factor of truth, that's your call. I'm but so they've disgusting. got the most touchdowns <laughs> by any receiver duo. Don't get me wrong. Stephon Diggs and uh, and uh, Josh Allen have eight Josh total Allen. touchdowns. So 88 more. They he would be right there if they, if we want to put eight touchdowns on there as well. That's I fine. I can't believe. But these are the guys. I, it's the best wide receiver duo. Oh, go uh, ahead. Even though he's tight Wait end. Receiver to show duo. my graphic don't for let a that, second. Don't let that screw up. The reason Brandon, for <laughs> oh, the record, man. threw it to me was because I was originally <laughs> supposed to respond to Brandon. But I assumed my teammate Kevin Wilds was going to jump on the most interesting thing Brandon said, which is that Brandon oh, totally. truly believed 
that he and Jay Cutler were going to pass Montana <laughs> and Rice as the greatest duo ever. You're like, Marvin Harrison made Manus. Statistically. Like, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice are sitting there and just like, what? Okay, statistically, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, Jerry Rice, I think, had four yeah. touchdowns last season. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Montana and Rice watching yeah. the show from palatial estate saying, the hell happened no, to no, us? I wanted, is not no, the, I, listen, I, listen, you Nick. You wanted the record. Nick, what I, I wanted it, was, yeah. what I wanted was, the vision that I had in 2007 was Wilds. I was going to be on first things first, and Wilds was going to throw up this graphic, yeah. and he's going to show as far as <laughs> most York. touchdowns. They're going to see Marvin Harrison, uh -huh. you guys Peyton Manning, and then you're going to right. Yeah, we're going to be right above them. That's yeah. what I thought was going to happen. I got you. I got you. No, I got it. I just, I was so blown away. And then Wilds is like, hey, what about this duo that was awesome in 2013? So I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. keep with the rules. And first of all, I'm going to keep it to receivers and I'm going to keep it to this season. So can we show the six best duos? Let's just show them and let's try to eliminate it down. Breeze and Michael Thomas have to be taken off because Michael Thomas has been hurt all year. So now we're down to these five. Ooh, the next one here. that I'm going to remove, because I wow. believe, no matter what the numbers are, I think of those five quarterbacks, this guy is the fifth best. And of those five receivers, oh my goodness. this Stop. guy is the fifth best. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, you're out. Kyler oh, and DeAndre. Oh, now I could have I could have flipped Kyler and DeAndre and Allen and Diggs, but Kyler and DeAndre are the easy ones next to go because part of the quarterback wide receiver duo is so Kyler and DeAndre can go is quarterback part as well. So now we're down to these three. At the beginning of the year, it looked like it was Russ and DK, but they have yep, Russ has true. fallen a bit, DK's fallen a bit, so now they've got to go. So now we have your two best quarterbacks and maybe your two most dangerous receivers. I'm going to remove Mahomes and Hill. I think Rodgers wow. and Adams are the best. <laughs> and here's why. What? What? And here's why. Oh, what? That was not easy for Here. you. Bravo. <laughs> it's not, but here's why. Every single game the Packers play, the defense says we have to stop Devontae Adams first. Some games yeah. the Chiefs play, the defense says we have to stop Tyreek. Some they say we got to stop Kelsey. So Tyreek has the benefit that he's not always the guy opposing defenses are trying to stop. Every time the Packers play, it starts with stopping Devontae Adams and you move out from there. Because of that and because the numbers are so similar, I think they've been the best duo. I've got to give them credit. And yeah, the scary. Josh Allen fans, yep. God, they're going to hate me even more. But sorry. Oh, I just don't like that you had them at five? Well, okay, the so maybe I had them at five. At best, I got him four. Sorry, Jenna. Go ahead. We can talk wow. about this more later. But that's how, that's the number. And we're like going to talk up. about this more later, but we have to move on. Why? Because it is Wednesday. Why? Because Nick's Tears. committee of yes. eight met late into the night. Why? Because when we come yep. back, he will unveil the latest NFL tiers. This one, my friends, you are going to like. It's next. First things first. Hey, First Things First listeners, it's Charlotte Wilder here to tell you about my new podcast with Mark Titus called The People's Sports Podcast. It comes out every Thursday, and Mark and I take one of the big stories of the week, and then we go off on tangents you never saw coming. This might mean that we start talking about the Dodgers winning the World Series and end up wondering if Knicks fans deserve happiness, or begin with LeBron's greatness and end up drafting our ultimate beer league softball team made up of old athletes. Whatever it is, the only rule of the show is that it has to be fun and funny because these days we can all use as many laughs as we can get. So check it out wherever you get your podcasts and come down weird sports rabbit holes with us. We can't wait to have you. Now, back to First Things First. Welcome back. At last check, it was Wednesday morning, and you know what that means. It is a fresh final regular season edition of Nick's NFL Tears headed into week 17. What do you got, Nick? Woo! New rules! New rules for the tiers. What? If you are not a playoff team or playoff eligible, you're not being included. We, there's not enough time to concern <laughs> like ourselves that. at the committee with non-playoff teams. There are 18 teams either locked into the playoffs or still alive for the playoffs 
Those are the 18 teams we will address. Reveal the tiers headed into week 17. Bottom row, wow. the Ooh. if only tier. All those teams are going to finish the year. The Bears are going to say, if only we didn't blow a 10-point lead in the final two minutes to the Lions. The Cowboys are going to say, if we didn't blow a 10-point fourth quarter lead to the Steelers. The Giants are going to say, if we didn't blow an 11-point fourth quarter lead to the Eagles. And the Dolphins are going to say, if we didn't lose in week 17 to the Bills, which I think they are, all those teams are going to miss out by one game. Happy to be here, Tier. These are teams like, hey, we made it. Nobody, people didn't think we could. The Cardinals, they don't know if Kyler's going to play. The Rams are starting, starting John Swafford. They're just going to be happy to be there. The Colts, after what happened last week, they're going to be happy to be there. And Washington, while I do think Washington, if they get Tampa, can be dangerous, they also right now, who are they starting at quarterback? Heineke? Like, they'd just be happy to be there at 7-9 and nine if they make it into the playoffs. Next year. Teams we know are going to be in the playoffs, or we believe, I believe, the committee believes going to be in the playoffs, but they're headed in the wrong direction. Browns, just lost to the Jets. Headed in the wrong direction. Sorry, those are the rules. Titans, Titans, I know you're playing Green Bay, but you didn't exactly acquit yourself well in cold weather. And guess what, Tennessee? If you win your first playoff game, you are going to either Pittsburgh, Buffalo, or Kansas City. All those places are cold. All those places could have snow, and you looked awful. And the Steelers, despite the comeback, the last month, they've been headed in the wrong direction. Don't get hot tier. These are three teams that if their quarterback plays great, they look terrifying. Lamar's an MVP. Russ is the best player to never get an MVP vote, is what I believe, and I think a lot of people believe. And obviously, Brady's won a bunch of MVPs and has looked awesome post by. Those three teams, while I don't fully believe in them as Super Bowl contenders, if they get hot, they can be dangerous. This next tier, Saints and Bills fans. You should start writing the NFL League office angry demand letters right now. Every other year in modern oh. NFL history, you'd have a bye. Every other year, you'd be sitting at home resting, chilling, waiting for your round two opponent at home, one playoff victory away from a conference championship game. This year, no, you got to play wild card weekend. That dramatically lowers your chances of making the Super Bowl. Number one contender, the Packers moved themselves up with the domination of the Titans. And the Chiefs, whose number one contender had been the Chiefs, given what the Packers did, the Packers have replaced that, but the Chiefs, of course, the champs stay the champs. They've been there all season long. 15-1 and one is what they're going to be. Shouldn't change that. So, Brandon, that is... Yep. Our final regular season version of the tiers. The committee's very proud of itself, if we must say. There was a lot of argument about Buffalo. Buffalo was elevated to a level that I, I bet, personally I might not be comfortable with. But the committee overruled me. So this is where we come out with the latest tiers. <laughs> Your thoughts. Look, buddy, I, I know when to give respect when respect's due. I, I, I mean, we started this, what, week five, week six? I'm not sure. This mm -hmm. is the first week that you got it right. Throw those tears back up there. I want to look at this oh. this whole tears thing. Bro, you really got it right. There's there's really no argument on my end. I, I, I look at the Colts, though, Nick, right? Like, think about this. How did this team go from playing for the potentially the number two seed in the AFC to be out of the playoffs? Like, that's what happened last yeah. week. The Colts went from potentially being the number two seed if a few things fell in place with their win to being out of the playoffs. Yep. The Colts, wow, that's just a, a whole nother show. But then you go to the yep. Buffalo Bills. All right. Okay. I believe that they're the only team in the AFC that can contend with the Kansas City Chiefs, but I understand why you're reluctant to believe in Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills because you think that Josh Allen is too inconsistent. You need to see Correct. more. I get it. But the day is coming, Nick, and it's coming fast where you're going to have to decide and you're going to have to make a stance and say, you know what, guys? I am now going to the dark side. Buffalo Mafia, Bills Mafia. <laughs> I was I, I, I may not been wrong, but I, I was late to the party. I believe I think in the next two weeks you're going to have to stand up here and, and make that statement. Mm. So here's what I want to okay. do. 
I don't want to petition you, and I labeled this as a petition, but it really isn't a petition because you got it right. I just want to make sure you have all the information as we're watching okay. this last week play out and unfold and also round one. I want to make sure that you have everything you need to make that decision like, okay, I believe. Brandon was saying it all year. So here's three things for you, buddy. Number one, yep. Brian Dayball can outcoach Spagnola. Okay, Steve Spags. Ooh. Okay, this defensive coordinator, I enjoyed my time with him when I played for the Giants. I think he's a phenomenal coach. I think he's doing a great job. But Brian Dayball, that matchup, he wins that matchup all day. I'm telling you right now, Brian Dayball is creative. He's hot. He's in a rhythm. Did you guys know that offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, they get into the swing of things as well, like players. They get into a rhythm. They get into the ebbs and flows of games. So this guy right now is on cloud nine. So that's number one. Number two, Leslie Frazier in this matchup and you know and his ability to scheme versus Eric B enemy and coach Andy Reid. Now Andy Reid, Eric B enemy, it's hard to stop them, but you can slow them down, Nick. And I'm telling you, this guy's able to rush 3, rush 4, contain Patrick Mahomes and play zone. How did they win the first game? If you don't recall, it was the running game. This kid, the running back mm -hmm. Edwards Alaire yep. went off 160 yards. I believe that they'll have a, a better game plan that can slow down the run game and do exactly what they did in the passing game, and I believe it was week six. And the last thing that I want to give you, all right, this is the last bit of information, buddy, all right, so you can have it over the next two weeks. Josh Allen is the real deal. You just have to trust me and believe me on this one. Please, please come to the dark side, Nick. Please. That's all I have okay. for you. That's it. I got it. Those are all really good points. And those are all reasons why, if the Chiefs were to play the Bills in the conference championship game, the Chiefs would probably, my guess is, be less than a, they'd be small favorites. Maybe, maybe four and a half point favorites. Unfortunately, none of those reasons dissuade me from my belief that the Bills ain't getting there. That the Chiefs match up well with the Bills, but they ain't going to have to play them because the Bills going to lose before then. So we can revisit. Now, the committee says I'm wrong. The committee says the Bills are the, the, the closest competition in the AFC. They, you know, so that's what the tiers represent. What yeah. I represent is me, my belief that Josh yeah. Allen and the Bills, unfortunately, with the great coaching staff, are not going to get to a conference championship game. So that's where I'm at. So you just trumped the entire from committee. The no, 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 no. How do you the trump the entire committee? The tears, You're one man. I make my opinions. That's I make my opinions. But <laughs> hold on. Wild. The gentleman from Kevin. the Northeast yes. has put his glasses yes. on, and I believe he has a petition oh. to do. Oh. Call, 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 call. Fresh from the Raven's <laughs> Claw. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Fresh from the Ravens claw comes the petition for the Ravens to move up, even though they are on the if they get hot tier, because they are very hot for the reasons contained. Bert was that. Henceforth, reason number one, they are already hot. They've won four games in a row, five if you count the game uh, that they should have won against the Steelers. But, you know, we had McSorley in there. <laughs> Great beer, not a great quarterback. All due respect, my friend. They got the Bengals next. They would that would be six wins in a row. Again, if you count the Steelers win, which I am. Number two, number one in point differential. 430 scored, 300 given up. Gives them 130. Some quick math. Who's at 128? The Chiefs. <laughs> oh, perhaps you should beat the Falcons by more than three points. And finally, a resurgent Lamar. And no, he wasn't going to the bathroom. That's why I didn't put it at number two. I put it at number three. <laughs> Since returning, 117 passer rating, third best in the entire league. 12 total TDs, also third mm, best. Preach. The preach. committee says if the Ravens get hot, my friend, the Ravens are hot. And they deserve a spot That's higher bad. on your tier system. <laughs> Good day. Okay, Brilliant. so here's the thing. And this is probably Somebody. going to make well one member of the panel happy and further anger or frustrate another member of the panel. As a Chiefs fan, 
the Ravens scare me far more than Buffalo. This is, again, not, I'm removing oh. myself from the, as a committee, as the president of the committee, just this is Nick Wright, the Chiefs fan. Because if the, the only way, because the Chiefs have a bye, they would have to play the Ravens. And I, and I know I'm a Chiefs fan, but also, I think the whole AFC, it's being measured against the Chiefs. I think the question is, can you go yes. to Kansas City and win when we're talking about the AFC playoff picture? Yep. That'd be true if I were from any city in America. The only way the Ravens and the Chiefs play is if the Ravens have won a playoff game. And that will have removed such a burden, I believe, from the back of Lamar. It will remove such a, like a looming yep. storm cloud over the, can he get it done in the playoffs? Is he just a regular season guy? Was last year a one-year wonder? It, so in order for them to be playing the Chiefs, they will have come off the best moment the franchise has had since the Super Bowl nearly a decade ago. So as a, someone who is rooting, obviously, for the Chiefs, the Ravens matchup scares me, even though Kansas City has beaten Lamar multiple times, it still scares me. So I think I, I, the Ravens, I need to see them do it in the postseason because of what's happened the last two years. But Jenna, I think they are a very, very dangerous team when healthy, and they're getting healthier. Mm. All right, so let's just quickly take a look at games to watch this weekend. You got a whole slate of games with playoff implications. Cards, Rams, Ooh. you got Titans, Texans, Packers, Bears there, and then Washington, Philly. So I'm sure this committee will be watching very, very carefully. We'll get you take yep. on which of those you think, Nick, will have the biggest playoff implications come this weekend. But back to our top story this morning. The Pittsburgh Steelers will rest Big Ben heading into their big game with the Browns. Good idea or bad idea? We discussed next first things first mm, interesting well done good stuff. interesting Back here talking some NBA now. We head to Brooklyn where they welcome the return of superstar Kevin Durant. He and Kyrie look good in games one and two. Like really good, like really really good, like fish called Wanda kind of good. But since that 2 and 0 start, a loss to the Hornets and a loss to the Grizzlies where KD and Kyrie both rested. With that, we welcome in Chris Broussard. So Chris Broussard put a grade on KD, KD, Kyrie, and the Nets one week into the season for us. KD, I like that, Jenna. I, I don't yeah, know if that was a stumble, but both that names. sounds good. I'm in a rush. KD, that might be better than 7-Eleven. Who's yeah, got the time? I like that. Yeah, but exactly. A, a minus. A minus. They they are playing lights out basketball. Let me talk about Kyrie Irving for a minute. Kyrie Irving is playing like he is absolutely one of the best players in the world. He's playing so well that I think rumor has it Nick Wright is thinking about moving him up like five tiers. I mean, Whoa. he looks unstoppable. We, we know KD. <laughs> we know KD is unstoppable, right? But Kyrie looks unstoppable because of his handle. His herky-jerky moves, his ability to finish at the rim, and now he's shooting the three like Damian Lillard and Steph Curry? I mean, he looks phenomenal. So, A-minus for these guys. KD, KD is still working off the rust, even as he's averaging 27 points a game and shooting 53% from the floor. But KD is shooting 69% from three. And only 47% from two. That tells you that this is rust. Because obviously the three-pointers are less contested. So what he's getting used to are contested shots, which he hadn't faced in 18 months. So that's why you see his mid-range, Jay, is not where his three-pointer is at this point. And of course he missed the three, a mid-range shot at the end of the Charlotte game, they could have tied that one and given the Nets a chance to win. So they'll, he'll work off the rust. I got to say this to Nick quickly. Nick, you've been riding them about, oh, they're going to be horrible defensively. Not bad, but horrible. Yep. Bottom five. They are. No <laughs> it's early. I get it. But they are number <laughs> yeah. one in the league in defensive efficiency, Nick Wright. All right, A-minus, I see no reason to think that they won't make the finals. Yeah, so look, I'm Definitely. glad that you said that, Chris. I'm going to jump in here real quick, Nick, and then I'm going to toss it to you quickly because I love when you Please. two talk about basketball. But I'm glad that you said A- minus because the lazy answer would have been, you know what, this is a C, maybe a potentially a B- minus because these mm. guys won the first two games. They beat 
the Warriors by 26. Then they go to Boston, beat them by 28, a really good Boston team. And then they lose to the Hornets. Then they lose to the Grizzlies. So when I look at this, I see a team that came out that tried to prove to themselves that they were a good team, first and foremost. And second, make a statement and prove to the entire NBA world that we are here and we are the best team in this league. So when you look at it, to me, this is the culture of the NBA. Now, when we talk football, I consider myself an expert. We talk basketball, you guys, I consider you guys experts, and I consider myself uh, uh, talking about it as from a fan's perspective. Grew up playing the game and absolutely love it. I watch it all the time. So when I look at it, guys don't play ball in the, at the beginning of the season. They pick and choose when they want to play, Nick. Like these guys right now, they're like, you know what? Let's see if we start off hot. If we start off hot, then maybe we'll go after 65 wins, 70 wins, see if we can go after a record or two. But for the most part, these guys don't play defense until the time is ne absolutely necessary. This is the culture of the NBA. So them sitting at two and two, they're still an A-plus Nick. Okay, so I, I am <laughs> living once again in a crazy house. Oh. So I'm going to oh. give them an incomplete. I'm going to give them an incomplete. Okay, let's start with what everyone agrees. Elementary with. school? Everyone agrees. No, I'll explain why. I, well, I can't believe y'all are giving out A's for a team that's five years. <laughs> it's four A's. Games. It's not the preseason. I get it. It's but, only but, four but games. It, it, yeah, yeah, and they've lost half of them. I mean, it seems to matter, but who we're knows? Counting, the record doesn't matter. We're counting Listen, Memphis. It didn't. Oh, okay. We're counting, we're counting Memphis. Well, we're going to get to that in just a second. Because we are. All right, what well, we can all agree on, the most important thing for the Nets, Durant looks awesome. He, he, he looks like he was never yeah. hurt. That is the most important thing. We all agree on that. What I think we also all agree on, the Dinwiddie injury is a big deal. Not just because he was a starter for them and valuable, but because it ruins their ability to trade for James Harden. That's gone now. We can pretend Who that that doesn't Harden? matter, but that's, oh, I don't know. He's averaging 37 points a game. Seems like it's good, but I don't know. Listen, it, it, whatever. Again, the Nets are the number one defense. They have an A+, plus, oh. and they're 2-2. Two and two. But now let's talk about the Memphis game. <laughs> and this is my question, and anyone can answer it. Why didn't Kyrie Irving play? Why? Someone tell me. You... In the game before, Spencer Dinwiddie tears his ACL. Your other max guy, Kevin Durant, is coming off a ruptured Achilles, can't play back-to-backs right now. Totally reasonable, totally understandable. Kyrie Irving is 28 years old, fully healthy, on a max contract. His team's coming off a loss, <laughs> yeah. coming off a major end, coming off a, losing a starter for the year, and the other superstar has to sit out. Play! What are we doing here? Why is Kyrie Irving sitting out already? Nick? He's not hurt. He's not dealing with an injury. And don't tell me this is what everyone does. Because it's not what everyone does. He's 28 years old. Nick. And so we're just going to say, go ahead. Yeah, Brandon. I, I'm go. with you when you write, buddy. You are right right now. This is my team. Why is he not playing? I picked the Nets, and I am with you right now. 28 years old, max contract, totally healthy. Your butt need to be out there playing. But the but he, but it is the play. culture. It is the culture. I, yeah. I, I don't understand it either, Nick. But it is the culture. Look, I I, I, I hear you, Nick, and I, I won't push back on that. It would have been great to see Kyrie playing. It's interesting what you're, they're doing in Brooklyn. If you watch it. They are playing Kyrie and KD together all the time, pretty much. Usually teams will yep. stagger when they have two superstars. One will always be on the floor. They're not doing that in Brooklyn. They're both averaging, ironically, 31.7 minutes a game. I don't think it's going to stay that close this year. But, you know, they're, they're doing it differently. I, I'm with you. I give you that one. But remember, Kyrie is injury prone, too. This is a guy that played, what, 20 games last yep. year? But for those years in Cleveland with LeBron, when he even, even got hurt then, means. he got hurt in the finals, we know that. So he is a guy that you do have to, almost like uh, Kawhi, he's a guy that you have to oh treat God. gingerly oh, well, and make sure. I'm serious, great. though. Look at his history, though. 
Is he not injury prone? Well, if they, I, I don't. You know I, that. I, that's a whole nother conversation. If you're injury prone, you need to go work work out with our colleague Jenna Wolf. If you're in the NBA, NFL, you got a title, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, of uh, being injury prone. Call Let's Jenna go. Wolf. She'll get you right because like you are a pro. Take care of yourself and get Kyrie. right. Wild. Yeah. Nick, you know they look great. You had a house so of, all you could do is win Kyrie for not playing. You know they no, look no, great. No, no, Broussard, here's, here's the thing about looking great, because that's what I thought, too. I was like, oh, it's an A+. Plus. Then I saw this graphic from Seth Parno. 12% of the game, no, sorry, times leading by by 20-plus points. 12%. It's more than ever. Because I thought those big wins over the Celtics and the Warriors, I was like, wow, the Nets are rolling. Then the Lakers blow out a team, the Clippers get blown out. Like Teams are just getting blown out now. So as high as we want to be on a team that's 2-2 two and two because of those two big blowouts, that everyone's getting blown out. So for me, I'm gonna, yeah, I have to downgrade blowouts. them to like a B plus, A minus. The other thing, Broussard, and I know we got to go to break. Downgrade. The amount of mid-range shots that Durant is taking, and we know that he likes the mid-range, he wants to go old school, and he's not going to the rim aggressively like he used to. Right. It's, it's not a concern yet, but it should be on everyone's radar. It's like, hey, dude, why don't you get some layups? Why don't we get some dunks here? We know we love their mid-range, but we're turning into a little DeRozan-y. That's a very pretty That's graphic. Ooh, good uh, take. Broussard, good thank take. you so much. Great to chat with you today, and it was a good take, Wilds. And anytime two and two. anyone wants to A plus is all around. I'm happy to say. Hey, he right Kyrie better hey, be back moving to the NFL. up. That's all I'm saying. A plus. He better be moving up. In the incomplete, what is this, Kyrie's elementary? Kyrie's missing games. We're going to oh talk some more on the other side. Incomplete. Stay with us. Back after this. Sorry, Jenna. I just can't deal with these <laughs> guys. Yeah, sorry. It's the final Sunday of the regular season kicking off with the Cowboys. It's a must-win game against the New York Giants. And then the Bears trying to win their way into the playoffs against a Packers squad gunning for that top seed in the NFC. Oh, it's so exciting this weekend. Check local listings for the games in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Hey, we got a big AFC North showdown on Sunday. Steelers and Browns. Steelers announced Ben Roethlisberger will be resting. So it is Mason Rudolph getting the nod. But let's talk about what this game means for the Cleveland Browns. For the Browns to make the playoffs, they need to win or have the Colts lose, which is on the table, or have Tennessee lose coupled with Miami and Baltimore wins. But in short, for the Browns, a win, and they're in. But, Brandon, if they don't get that win, if they don't get the help, after the season that they have now just put together, what would it mean for Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns if they miss the playoffs? Jenna, this is a loaded question, and this is a setup. And uh, <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to become a, a walking contradiction. I, I really am. Six weeks ago, Nick Wright and I had a classic uh, heavyweight knockdown argument oh, on remember. television to the point where there was, yeah, there was people on the on, like on the beat just writing about us. I think there was one guy on Yahoo that said, "Why did Jenna Wolf Blame try Jenna. to stop this argument between yeah. Nick and Brandon? This is what you want to see yep. on television." I and, agree. And, and, and I just remember thinking, like, okay, well, why did he say that? And what were we arguing about? We were arguing about the Cleveland Browns, and we were arguing about, you know, where, Nick, you're on one end of the spectrum, and you're like, the Cleveland Browns need to be proud of where they're at. Like, they have been a losing organization for, what, 20-something years. For them to yep. be sitting here trending in the right direction, even with Baker Mayfield playing the way he was, they should be proud. For me, I said, Nick, what are you talking about? There's one goal for the 32 teams, and that's to win a Super Bowl, point blank, period. But the reality, Nick, man, and this is where I've become a walking contradiction is, you know what, if they lose this game, it's going to hurt, it's going to sting for about a month, but then you're going to look up and you're going to, if you're Baker Mayfield, you're the owner, and you're going to be like, you know what, that sucks because the, we, we had an opportunity to do something more and special, but... This is what we want to see. We're trending in the right direction. We can build on that. So I hate to say this because I wanted that to live and sit out there, you know, in the archives of first things first. Yeah. But the reality uh -huh. is, you know, they should they should make the playoffs. I think they will make the playoffs. But if they don't, they'll get over it and they should look back and say, you know what? I'm proud of what we did and how we turned this organization around.
So here's the problem, because I'd love to fully Take agree it easy with on you, me. because you're Take right that, no, I'm not. It, we're both in a bit of a reversal here. So I'm going to use a, an analogy here. If you've been broke for 20 years and you finish the year all of a sudden after being broke with $50,000 in your bank account, that feels amazing. But if three weeks yeah. prior you had a million in there, you're kind of bummed. You're like, better than what it was yeah. 20 years ago, but really awful compared to where it was three weeks ago. The Browns yeah. were sitting pretty 12 days ago. They're great. What do we got coming up? The Jets and then a rematch with the Steelers. Turns out the rematch with the Steelers is going to be against Mason Rudolph, not Big Ben. If you go from just having to win one of those games to missing the playoffs, it kind of undoes all the good feeling. From a practical perspective, which is, I think Baker and Stefanski need playoff experience. Even if it's just one game, I think they, yeah. they, you know, I'm down on the bills compared to other people. But it's good for McDermott and Josh Allen that they got one game of playoff experience, even though it was one and done last year. It positions them better this year. The Browns need that. And from an emotional perspective, if you're a believer in certain teams are just cursed, like the Clippers or the Browns, it Ooh. further feeds into that. Yep. We were 10 and 4, Wilds, and then we had the Jets on the schedule, and we had a hot tub derail our Jets game. And then the revenge of Mason Rudolph. <laughs> Last time we seen him, he's getting conked on the head by the best player on our team. And now he comes back and steals the playoffs from us. Like, so even if from 100,000 feet, you would say, okay, 10 wins, that's a successful year. When you were 10 that's and four point. with the Jets and this guy coming up next, it would feel like a devastating failure, even Ooh, if in September brutal. Wilds, it wouldn't have. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested in this storyline, Brandon, and I think most people have it wrong because it's like, oh, like, you know, I'm not saying you have it wrong, Nick, but like it's being marketed or it's just out there on social media as this big revenge game yeah. and this, this that there's a lot of bad blood. And we haven't heard that much from Mason Rudolph, but Miles Garrett is on the record saying, like, I want to clear the air. Uh, if the opportunity presents itself, I would like to, you know, sit down and, and talk to him and our, our fates will be intertwined and I don't want to have any grudges. Whether that happens before the game, Brandon, I think was, is super interesting. I, if I'm Miles Garrett, I yeah. think that he feels like he needs to sort of clear the air. He talked about retiring from football after this. Like, this was not wow. just like, ah, oh, I bonked a guy on the head. He's like, I, he's like, then he was like, I got to be a better player and a better man. And this year, the Browns have him for a Walter Payton nominee. He's doing, he went to yep. Tanzania on a clean water initiative. He's in the social justice committee for, um, for the Browns. So he has turned it around, and this is more of a story of redemption yep. rather than sort of vengeance. But, so but I'm else? super interested if they take time to, like, meet up and shake hands or whatever. But while I'm shocked that they haven't done this already because I had an opportunity probably yeah. around like uh, a month and a half ago to sit down with Miles Garrett. And one of the things he talked about that I thought was surprising and awkward, to, to be honest with you, is he actually went to Coach Tomlin when they played the first game this year and they cleared the air. And then he also told me that their families are really close, meaning the Garrett family and the Tomlin family where they play Scrabble. Like, they've been playing Scrabble since this incident. Tomlin and also the Garrett family, where it's just this big old thing that's been happening week in and week out. XI so for not him not to have this conversation with Mason Rudolph, I'm actually shocked that they haven't had that yet. But hopefully, you know, they have that moment where they meet, whether it's at the 50 or in the tunnel. Maybe it doesn't even have to be in front of the cameras just to say, you know what, this was an anomaly. That's not who you are. That's not who I am. And let's move forward. Love it. That's the best case scenario. The second best scenario is if the Browns are losing and they're going to miss the playoffs, is he does it again. Like, you know what, Mason? Back I'm, out I'm, out That's the I'm out of here. 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 I'm going back. The best scenario is he does it again. He's like, you know what? I, I can't. Nick. I can't. I'm not, I'm not having you in my season, Mason. You're no. not in my season no. two years in a row. That's awful. That's awful. Come on. No, it's what the others do. No. What is wrong with your guys? What is wrong with your guys?
We will continue to discuss this. We got to go. Undisputed started right now. We'll see you tomorrow morning, everyone.